right? If you don't have high self-regard, self-regard being one of the emotional intelligence attributes we can measure, that's a belief in yourself as basically good and capable. If you don't have high self-regard, try to layer on a skill of any kind. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing a football with my six-year-old, wanting him to get better at throwing and catching because he has dreams of being a quarterback. He's 39 pounds, but okay. Um, but while we're throwing and catching, I'm talking to him about, you know, gosh, it, it, you know, when, when, when Peyton Manning and Drew Brees are playing in the Super Bowl and they got all these big guys coming to, you know, to sack them and they got to make decisions about where they're going to throw that ball, that's a pretty stressful situation, don't you think, JT? And, and he's catching and throwing the ball and, and he's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty stressful. And I said, well, you know, what do you think these guys have to be good at? Well, they have to be good at throwing and catching. Actually, they're quarterbacks. They don't have to be so good at catching. They have to be really good at throwing. But, but they have to be able to handle the stress. That's right, JT. They have to be able to handle the stress. That's a huge emotional intelligence attribute. You could be the best thrower or catcher. If you can't handle the stress, you're going to throw too soon when you see those big guys running after you. I know I would. So I like to say that IQ might get you in the door, but EQ, emotional quotient, by the way, those terms are interchangeable. EQ, emotional quotient, EI, emotional intelligence, means the same thing. IQ might get you in the door. EQ gets your name on the door. EQ is what has other people busting down the door to work for you. Because... Optimism. And optimism is an extremely important attribute for being successful in sales, especially in this kind of a marketplace. If you don't see the recovery coming, then why bother getting up and doing any of the sales activities? Because ultimately your brain is saying, eh, this isn't really worth it anyway. You've got to see what's happening now in our marketplace as a blip in time. This is a blip in time. It's not forever. It's something I just, maybe I need to adjust my activities to be successful in this kind of a market and do some different things or do some more things than I did when times were a little different or better. <music> Intelligence attributes, all of it can be improved on. There isn't a single attribute. Self-regard, flexibility, problem solving, optimism, happiness, empathy, all of it can be improved on. It takes some attention and focus, and first it takes an awareness of what are my blind spots. The other thing is I'm a big, big believer in using your strengths to bring up your weaknesses. In the, in the example that I shared with you earlier, the gentleman I was coaching who wanted to do more referral business was low on assertiveness but had extremely high interpersonal relationships. People love this guy. They love him. They'll do backflips for him. He just wasn't asking for them to help in a particular focused way. So we talked about how can you use the strength of that connection that you already have with people and just, and at the same time, acknowledge that you're not an assertive guy. Why not just acknowledge it? Why not just say, Hey, you know, you guys, we've been friends for a long time. We've done business together. You love the work I do. You've always complimented me. You know, it just dawns on me. I'm, shame on me. I'm not assertive enough to say, hey, who else do you know that I should be working with? Or that might, I might be able to help. Why not just call it what it is? Sometimes there's just, there's a learning experience for him, but there's also an opportunity for somebody else to really help. And it's just acknowledging, I won't say a weakness. I, I like to say an area for improvement. Um, you know, it's just, that's just what there is for him. Just an area for improvement, an area to put some attention on so he can develop, but using the strengths that he has. What are the two responses we are hardwired for when we're under stress from caveman days? Fight or flight. Fight or flight, you got it. Um, sometimes there's a third one that comes up, and that's freeze. I either fight, I run, or I'm deer in the headlights. But generally, if, if it's fight or flight, 
um, it, we're paralyzed, and that limits our access to all the other things that we've learned in a training situation, for example. And how you're delivering the message, guess what's coming through in every word, but mostly in how you're saying it? Self-regard, optimism, empathy. Those are really strongly translated through your tonality. You know, if, if I was standing up here and I didn't have self-regard, half of you would have left already. Truly. Because, you know, if I don't believe in what I'm doing, why should you? Right?